Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about monetary policy and the bond market. In this video we're going to look at the impact of expansionary monetary policy so expansionary monetary policy here on the bond market and what we're going to say is we are going to look at the impact first on the money market translate that into the real economy and then move on to the bond market to see the impact on yield etc okay so we start off here with the money market diagram and what we have is a money supply curve which is controlled by the central bank and independent of the real interest rate and we also have a downward sloping line here representing money demand the equilibrium point is where they intersect and this yields the real interest rate r1 and the quantity of money in the economy q1 over here and this is our starting point so we'll call it point a we're saying that there's uh, a policy of expansionary monetary policy which is expanding the money supply and what this means is that the central bank is going to purchase government bonds on the market and if they purchase these government bonds what they're doing is they're injecting cash into the economy and by injecting cash into that economy they are increasing the money supply increasing the amount of loans that can be issued in terms of the banking system and therefore we move to ms1 and increase in the money supply and we reach a new equilibrium point because of that equilibrium point b and at that point the real interest rate has reduced down to r2 down here and the quantity of money has increased up to q2 over here now because of the reduction in the real interest rate real interest rate reducing that has a positive impact on two real variables on consumption which tends to go up in that case and on investment by firms which also also tends to increase in that situation so as they increase they will have an impact on aggregate demand so we move on to our second diagram to see the impact on aggregate demand this model shows ad a downward sloping line it shows as well short run aggregate supply up here positively sloped and it also shows a long run aggregate supply curve the potential output of the economy the equilibrium between these three will show potential output in the economy with an inflation rate over here of inflation one and a GDP growth rate of GDP one over here. And we'll call that point A. Now, because of the expansionary monetary policy, what has happened is consumption and investment have increased. And we represent this by a rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve. So what we say here is that aggregate demand has increased over to ad1 over here and that gives us a new short run equilibrium point in the economy at point b where the inflation rate goes up to inflation two and the real gdp goes up as well in the short run so expansionary monetary policy has an impact on the real economy in the short run in order to generate this however what it's doing is it is the central bank is purchasing government bonds now if we go over to the bond market the third diagram over here we have a supply of government bonds on the market and we have a demand for it on the market where demand is equal to supply it gives us an equilibrium point point a and this tells us the price of bonds on the market p1 and it tells us the quantity demanded and supplied of bonds q1 in this situation because of expansionary monetary policy through the purchase the open market purchase of government bonds well what's happening in this bond market over here is an increased demand for government bonds increased purchase of them so this increased purchase brings us to d1 over here with a new equilibrium point of b where the price of bonds on the market are going to increase and they go up to p2 here so the purchase price of bonds goes up and the quantity increases as well so 
what is the price of a bond? Let's let's take the uh, fairly simple example here, where it's a one-year bond which is issued at face value of 100 euro. So that is for one year in this scenario here. Well, we can work out the interest rate on that bond quite easily. Now, to work out the yield on this bond, and we'll just put it in over here, so the yield on the bond is as follows. It is the current price on the market. Let's say while it was issued at 100 euro, the P1 the current price in the market is, let's say, 95 due to demand and supply dynamics. So there is less demand for this, let's say, and the price dropped to 95. So it is the price uh, that it was issued for which is 100 in our situation here and it is the current price on the market so minus 95 and then it's all divided by the current market price the purchase price right now which is 95 and multiplied by 100 and that yield gives us uh, or that formula gives us a yield of 5.26% so the yield on a government bond currently at point A is 5.26. Now, because of the expansionary fiscal or monetary policy, the price of the bond has increased on the market. And let's say it has increased to 97 euro. So the purchase price is now 97. Well, the yield in this case becomes still, what's the issue price? 100. Now what's the purchase price currently? 97 and that's all divided by the current purchase price 97 and we multiply that by 100 and we if we work out this formula what we work out is 3.09 percent so following expansionary monetary policy and the increase in the price of the bond due to extra demand for it, there's an inverse relationship between the bond price and the yield of the bond. So what happens in bond markets here is, following expansionary monetary policy, the interest rate drops, and in our case here, it dropped from 5.26% down to 3.09%. So expansionary monetary policy tends to decrease the yield on bonds. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.